Hello, this is going to be a video over the class problems I posted online. This video will probably just entitled chapter 10 problems and then I'll have another video up for chapter 11. As always, I strongly recommend that you do these problems on your own first and then watch the video to see if you got them correct and if not, then where a mistake was potentially made. So let's get started. Number one, a correct interpretation of the confidence interval can portray information on the significance of an observation, uh, observed estimate. And the answer is true, it can. If you'd like to read more about this, you can find that on page 226. Next question, which of the following would incorrectly result in a type one error for the null that the average resting heart rate for an individual with prehypertension is 71 BPM based on the following confidence interval resulting from the investigation. And they give us a confidence interval of 70.5 to 79.5 beats per minute. So let's break this problem down a little bit, a little bit more, and then we'll answer it. So first we need to define what is a type one error. A well, type one error is when you reject a null hypothesis even though the null hypothesis is true. So based on that, how would we incorrectly get a result of a type 1 error? Now remember, we don't want type 1 errors, but they can happen. And the type 1 error, again, is when you reject a null hypothesis, even though the null hypothesis is true. So based on that, we know we're going to at least take off D and C, because they fail to reject a null hypothesis. And to get a type 1 error, you're going to reject a null hypothesis. Now, let's go a little further. They give us a confidence interval of 70.5 and 79.5 beats per minute. So in order to have a type one error, we would have to reject a null hypothesis even though the null hypothesis is true. So in order for it to be null hypothesis is true, it has to be between the this interval here. If it's outside of this interval, that means we wouldn't, we would normally not, uh, we would reject the null hypothesis and we have a significant uh, information and that's what we want. That's exactly what would be correct when you do a, some sort of research study uh, or investigating anything, you want to reject a null hypothesis and prove that your alternative hypothesis is correct. So when we look at A and B, they both reject a null hypothesis and one is based off of whether the null hypothesis value lies within the interval and the other one does not lie within the interval. Well, in order to have a type one error, the null hypothesis is proven to be true, so it would be within inside the error. So we want to reject a null hypothesis based on the fact that the, the null value lies within the interval. That's how you would incorrectly get a result of a type one error. So the answer is A. Number three, the following table illustrates the BMI for a number of patients recently enrolled in a study investigating the relationship between BMI and type two diabetes. So here we have a chart of patients A through F and their BMI accordingly on this side. Part A, assuming the participants can be considered to be a, uh, normally distributed and that they are, come from a population with a standard deviation where sigma equals 2.4, calculate a 95% confidence interval for the mean BMI of the population for which they represent. So this, we're gonna create our own confidence interval. We're gonna create a 95% confidence interval. So we know from the book that our confidence interval formula is x bar plus or minus the z1 minus alpha over 2 times the standard error of x. So let's tackle these one by one. So the standard error of x is equal to standard deviation over the square root of n. Well, they give us the standard deviation of 2.4 uh, kilograms over meters squared for your BMI. And we know our N is A through F, which if you put numbers evaluated to it, six, we have six people in our study. So our N equals six. So to find our standard error, we take 2.4 divided by the square root of six. When we do that, you get a value of 0.9797. Okay, and that's our standard error. 
next part of the problem is we're going to calculate a 95% confidence interval. This is where we go back to our z1 minus alpha over 2. So to figure this out, there's a page in the book on page 223 that will tell you the value that you will use for your z1 minus alpha, or the way you calculate it, is we have to figure our alpha. So we know alpha equals 1 minus our confidence interval percent, right? So 1 minus 0.95 equals our 0.05 alpha. We plug that into our equation, we're going to have 1 minus 0.05 over 2, which is going to give us 0.975. Now if we go to the back of the book and look up 0.975 in table B, or you use the value that's provided uh, on page 223, or you can even go to the very end of our new table in uh, table C and find the values associated with this. And you're going to get a value, a Z value of 1.96. I recommend you kind of should know that 95% confidence interval should be, you should know it's 1.96 uh, Z score. So now let's move down to the bottom part here and plug in everything that we know. So our formula is X bar plus or minus 1.96 times the standard error, which we know is 0 0.9797. If we take 1.96 times 9797, you're going to get 1.92. Well, now we need to add it to our X uh, value, our X bar. And the problem doesn't tell us what our X bar is. So we have to figure out what it is. And the way you do that is we're trying to find our average of B, our average BMI from all our participants. So we take all our BMI numbers, add them together. If you add them together, you're going to get 161.9 divided by 6. And that's going to equal 26 point, tw oh, I'm sorry, 26.98. And that's our X bar. So now we know our X bar is 26.98 plus or minus our 1.92, which is going to give us a confidence interval of 25.06 comma 28.9. This is your 95% confidence interval for a mean BMI of the population. So how do you correctly interpret this? The way you correctly interpret this is we say we are 95% confident that the true mean BMI is within the interval. And that's how you correctly interpret that interval or uh, how you correctly interpret the confidence interval that you found, that, that you are 95% confident that the true mean BMI is within the interval. Moving on to question four. Suppose the following table illustrates the age for a number of participants projected to enroll in a clinical trial looking at early onset of dementia. Part A, assuming these participants can be considered uh, to be normally distributed, and that they come from a population with a standard deviation of 4.3, calculate a 99% confidence interval for mean age of the population for which they represent. So once again, we're going to put our formula up here. X bar plus or minus Z 1 minus alpha over 2 times our standard error X bar. So we're going to work at it a little differently because people like to work at problems di differently. So this time we're going to calculate our X bar, which they don't tell us what our average age is. So once again, we have to take our age of participants, add them together. You should get 420 divided by 7. That's how many individuals we have. And you should get a value of 60. So our X bar equals 60. Now we're going to find our z of 1 minus alpha over 2. 
Another way to look at it is we're trying to find our Z percentile of 99% confidence. Once again, you can look at the table in the book, table in the back, and find your value. We know that our 1 minus confident percent equals our alpha level. So 1 minus 0.99 equals, right, because we're doing a 99% confidence interval, equals 0 0.01. When we take our, when we put our alpha in our formula, we're going to get 1 minus 0 0.01 over 2, which is going to be 1 minus 0 0.005, and then we're going to get a z value of 0.995. When you go to the back of the book and look this up, or go to your tables, you're going to find that it's going to be 2.576. So now we have our z value. So now we know we're going to move down here. We know what our x bar is, so that's 60 plus or minus our z value, which we just calculated, 2.576. Now we need to calculate the standard error of x, which we know is the standard deviation over the square root of n. Our standard deviation it told us to be 4.3. Number of people in the study is 7, so the square root of 7. We're going to get a value of 1.625. So we'll add that in down at the bottom. So we have 60 plus or minus our uh, z1 minus alpha over 2, which is 2.576 times our standard error, which is 1.625. This is going to be 60. Remember, we're going to do our orders operation, so we're going to multiply before we add or subtract. So we're going to take our 60. Hold on one second. 